experience. CBS News. If you think you can't afford a good college and can't get financial aid, you have a lot to learn, and we can help. Coming up on CBS This Morning with Harry Smith and Paula Zahn. The U.S. Virgin Islands, sunny and secure, right? Don't tell that to these sisters. What happened to them is shocking. Trouble in paradise. Tonight's Eye on America on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS. A quick reminder. Lubriderm Lotion heals your dry skin and protects it. Remember, the one created for dermatologists is the one that heals and protects. See you later, alligator. Now for your bath. Lubriderm introduces the loofah bar with natural loofah to gently exfoliate for softer, smoother skin. See you later, alligator. Walt Disney's World on Ice presents Beauty and the Beast live, coming to Boston Garden February 10th through 21st. Be our guest, be our guest on the WHDH TV invites you to save four dollars at the family shows on February 10th and 11th at 7:30. Get your tickets now at the box office and all Ticket Pro locations, or call 931-3100 to charge by phone. Walt Disney's World on Ice presents Beauty and the Beast live. Just wait till you see it on ice. Meteorologist Todd Gross, weekdays at noon on News 7. Good morning. It's Monday, January 25th. I'm Paula Zahn. And I'm Harry Smith. Good morning and welcome to CBS This Morning. Making headlines, lifting the ban on gays in the military, the Joint Chiefs meet today with their new boss. Plus, good news if you have college-bound kids, new rules mean more financial help. And Mark McEwen takes us to Toontown, Disney style. All that. And lots, lots more coming up on CBS This Morning. <clears throat> also coming up this morning, Thurgood Marshall's legacy of justice and equal rights. And Hillary Clinton's role in the White House. Has she already been handed too much power? We'll get a debate going on that very question this morning. Right now, Mark McEwen is standing by in California at Disneyland. Good morning. What's the weather like? Good morning. It's beautiful. 66 degrees out here, but the big problem is back at Disney World in Florida. Look at the map, and I'll tell you about it. Eastern Gulf of Mexico appears a potentially dangerous storm will be taking shape. I'll tell you about Florida coming up. It's time now for the latest news this morning. A showdown looms at the White House today when President Clinton and the Joint Chiefs of Staff discuss lifting the ban on homosexuals in the military. The president is taking the first steps towards fulfilling a hotly debated campaign promise. Jim Stewart reports. The Joint Chiefs of Staff meet with President Clinton today for what's being billed as a consultation on the issue of gays in the armed forces. But ultimatum is more like it. CBS News has obtained a confidential planning memo drafted last week by Secretary of Defense Les Aspen, which makes it clear Monday's meeting is not a negotiation. The Clinton administration owes one of every seven votes it received to the gay community, and the memo promises it will make good on its promise to lift the ban on homosexuals in the service. But Aspen is warning it won't be easy. The people ought to understand that, uh, and, and, and the people who are pushing on this issue ought to understand that that, that yes, the president can issue executive orders, but the Congress can always stick something onto a subsequent piece of legislation that overturns it. The key Aspen suggests is coming up with a plan that would regulate appropriate sexual behavior in the ranks once the ban is lifted. But one way or the other, the Pentagon is being told it's going to happen. So the script seems written, and the Joint Chiefs will play their role by pretending to be consulted, but the betting here is that they will not give in easily on this, and that this issue seems destined for a nasty fight in Congress. Jim Stewart, CBS News, the Pentagon. President Clinton faces several other pressing issues as he begins his first full week in office. Correspondent Bill Plant joins us now with more from the White House. Good morning, Bill. Good morning from the White House, Harry, where the flag is at half match this morning for the death of Justice Thurgood Marshall. And you're right, there are plenty of other difficult issues. For example, the president would like to move quickly this week on a new nominee for Attorney General. The better to put behind him the embarrassment caused by the Zoe Baird case. He discussed possible candidates in an Oval Office meeting yesterday with top advisors. Will the next nominee also be a woman? <laughs> Mr. Clinton's communications director seemed to say well, probably. If, if the best person is a woman, if he can find a qualified woman who can serve the Department of Justice well, he will appoint her, but he's not going to limit it. Mr. Clinton will also have to deal soon with the Justice Department report, which accuses FBI head William Sessions of misconduct. Sessions maintains that the investigation under former Attorney General William Barr was politically motivated. Every single 
item that is mentioned is answerable and is very clearly, very clearly, not the cases they presented. Without question. Another difficult issue floated yesterday by Treasury Secretary Lloyd Benson, who suggested that it may be necessary for the administration to propose some sort of broad-based energy consumption tax. Now, that could be the classic Washington trial balloon to see how it flies, but if the deficit is going to be cut, the money obviously has to come from somewhere. Harry? Bill Plan reporting from the White House this morning. Thanks. Americans are mourning the death of a legal giant, retired Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Marshall died yesterday of heart failure at the age of 84. Long before he became the first black to serve on the high court, Marshall was a hero of the civil rights movement. As an NAACP lawyer in 1954, he won the case of Brown versus the Board of Education, which brought an end to legal segregation in public schools. Coming up, the life and legacy of Thurgood Marshall. We'll be talking with Congressman John Lewis and attorney Vernon Jordan. Oregon Senator Bob Packwood is home this morning for the first time since the disclosure of claims he sexually harassed several women. Packwood appeared on local TV in Medford, saying he is working on the drinking problem, which he blames for his behavior. But Packwood refused to discuss the charges against him, while the Senate Ethics Committee is investigating. The comment about any of that now would simply be as inappropriate as commenting about evidence that's going to be presented in trial or witnesses that are going to be called in trial before the trial starts. Packwood has admitted in general terms the allegations of 10 different women that he made unwanted sexual advances. First daughter Chelsea Clinton heads off to her new school this morning. 12-year-old Chelsea will be attending Sidwell Friends, an exclusive private school in Washington. The choice of a private school drew criticism from advocates of public education. President Clinton made public education an important issue during the campaign, but says he did what's best for his daughter. Good luck. Coming up on six minutes uh, after the hour, Mark was out in Hollywood this weekend, hanging around with his best friend, Al Pacino. I just, uh... What does he call you, Mark? He, he didn't call me Marty like Jack Nicholson <laughs> did, but... But, Harry, by the way, I met an old, dear friend of yours at the Golden Globe Awards who had a message for you. Harry, I think some lighter colors on the suits would be good. He's too serious, don't you think he's too serious? But he's a good guy. He's a good-looking guy. He said you're a good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Crystal, of course, who was up for Mr. Saturday Night. I'll have the full report on the Golden Globe Awards coming up this hour. We are in Mickey's Toontown out here, and it's great for parents because if you know if you travel through Disneyland or Disney World, it's a hit and miss on whether you can meet Mickey or not. You can meet Mickey and all the characters and get pictures taken with them right here in uh, Mickey's uh, Toontown, and we'll tell you all about it coming up based on the Toontown, of course, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, one of my favorite movies. Let's talk about the weather. Back in the east, especially in Orlando, where there's Disney World, here's a problem today. Watch out for this. There's a storm, a potentially dangerous storm taking shape. The storm should last the peninsula of Florida as well as the Keys with 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. Could dump between 5 to 10 inches of rain across the area during the next 12 to 36 hours. Very rough seas along with some beach erosion as likely as you can see. Next 12 to 48 hours, just about the entire peninsula of Florida will be hit with 5 to 10 inches of rain. So we have it, we're calling it a Florida flood watch this morning. So hopefully this is not your week to go down to Orlando's Disney World. That's the national weather this morning. Good morning, everyone. Michelle Michaels in for Todd Gross this morning. Notice a big change. Front has moved off the coast. The showers are as well history, but temperatures are quickly dropping. Notice temperatures now just above the freezing mark. Winds are brisk out of the west, gusting up to 20 to 30 miles per hour. We should see partly to mostly sunny skies today, but winds will continue to be strong right through the early afternoon. And there will actually be even some scattered flurries in the higher elevations across northern sections of New England. So temperature-wise, only in the mid to upper 30s, that is where we should be. And uh, no more springtime warmth is at least in our forecast in the near future. By tonight, temperatures dropping down into the teens under clear, calm, and uh, cool skies. And then by tomorrow, once again, a sliver of cold air slides into New England. Temperatures just around uh, 30 degrees or so. We'll take an extended look at the outlook in just a bit, as well as look on morning traffic in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. I was in an automobile accident, and I was injured. Well, you never know if you have a case unless you check into it. My baby got sick with lead paint and it helped me win my case. You know how to talk to people and that's very important. A consultation was free. If they say he'll get back to you, he will get back to you. He's always there for me. And it's a good feeling because I feel like he's my lawyer. The law offices of Joel H. Schwartz. 
personal injury law. For a while now, I've been telling you about this number, the number to call to apply for a second mortgage loan. But now I want to tell you about another number. This one, only 7.5% per year. That's how low your rate could be if you call 1-800-DIAL-PMC right now. Apply right over the phone. No application fee. Get an answer in 24 hours, even if you've had credit problems in the past. Your loan was approved. When it comes to second mortgages, we approve. And with rates like this, so will you. Welcome back, everybody. Our spring break is over. That was this past weekend, and now it's time to get serious and head back to school or work. How's the morning commute? We'll text take a look at it with uh, Trooper Grant. Grant, good morning. Hi, good morning to you, Michelle. The commute is rather typical out here this Monday morning with uh, moderately heavy volume already in place. Southbound 128 out of the Wakefield area trying to make the transition to Woburn. Now, 3 and 93 are both heavily tied up out of the southern New Hampshire approaching Route 495. A bit closer to the city. There you can see that southbound central artery coming at you. It's pretty heavy and slow. The lower deck is full. The tow backs out through the uh, toll plaza at this point. The sun is beginning to bog down in East Boston. It's a very heavy ride northbound on the expressway to Andrews Square. Michelle? Thank you, Grant. As we look ahead to Tuesday, another sunny and cold day, and then clouds, it looks like, will begin to make their way at us for Wednesday, maybe a little bit of light snow. So your forecast for now goes partly to mostly sunny. Temperatures on the cool side. Sunny and cold for tomorrow as well, 25 to 30. Segment one this morning, the passing of a hero. Thurgood Marshall spent 24 years on the Supreme Court, one of the most respected jurists in American history. And before that, he was a pivotal figure in the crusade to fulfill the Constitution's guaranteed of equal rights for all. Joining us this morning are two men who play their own parts in that struggle. From Washington this morning, Georgia Congressman John Lewis, and here in New York, Attorney Vernon Jordan, and most recently, who served as the co-chairman of Bill Clinton's transition team. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for joining Good us. Good morning. Congressman Lewis, how do you think history will remember Thurgood Marshall? Thurgood Marshall will be remembered as, as a leader, as a fighter, as a shepherd. Uh, this man was there when we needed someone uh, to fight for civil rights. Long before coming to the court, uh, back in 1954, he won the decision to pave the way for the creation, for the building of a powerful civil rights movement. Congressman Lewis, where do you think the civil rights movement would have been without his work in the NAACP, without his work on the Supreme Court? Well, I'm not so sure where there would have been a mass civil rights movement. Uh, Thurgood Marshall, in his own way, laid the foundation and so he must re really be considered a, the, the father in the legal sense of the modern day civil rights movement. I would go far enough to say that he must be considered uh, the founding father of the new America. Uh, the civil rights movement wouldn't be what it is today. We wouldn't have made the progress that we've made without the leadership and the ability of a man like Thurgood Marshall. Congressman, you played a role in that struggle during the 60s. What do you remember about Thurgood Marshall during those times? Well, in, in 1954, when the decision was issued, when he won that major case, I was only 14 years old and growing up in rural Alabama, but I remember so well, and a few years later, I met through Good Marshall, appeared on a panel with him in the summer of 1961, debating and discussing the city-ins and the Freedom Ride. Uh, he was a wonderful man. Uh, he inspired people. He, he was stood tall, and he spoke in a, in a strong voice. And when you listen to Thurgood Marshall, you wanted to go out and do something, make your own contribution. Mr. Jordan, you were among the many who was inspired by Mr. Marshall's contributions. And you say in many ways he sparked your interest in law. How uh, so? Well, as a youngster in Atlanta, going with my parents to the Emancipation Proclamation Day program sponsored by the local NAACP was the first time that I heard Thurgood Marshall speak. And it was a memorable awesome experience. What do you remember about that day? Uh, his clarity, his conviction, his persuasiveness, and his certainty that the Constitution meant to include everybody on an equal basis. That was so clear to me uh, as a youngster in Wheat Street Baptist Church in Atlanta hearing him, hearing him talk. And it was at that point that I said, I want to be a lawyer like Thurgood Marshall. Did you spend much time with him? Did you have much conversation with him? Well, I was introduced to him personally by Ruby Hurley, who was the regional director of the NAACP. 
1962 at the NAACP convention in Philadelphia. And it was just one of the great experiences of my life. And so he was a, a friend and a mentor. He was Mr. Civil Rights. He was Mr. Justice Marshall. And in the waning years, uh, when I came to Washington, uh, we would talk on the telephone. Uh, uh, former Secretary of Transportation Bill Coleman, Wiley Branton, now deceased, and I uh, gave him his 80th birthday celebration dinner. And that was a, a memorable time when he was funny and he was warm. And he was not Mr. Justice or Mr. Civil Rights. He was Thurgood that night. Congressman Lewis, that, that's what you hear a lot about, uh, Thurgood Marshall, that he was this great storyteller. Byron White once told, uh, Justice Byron White once told a law clerk that uh, in the 25 years that Justice Marshall had served with him, that he'd heard over a thousand stories and never heard any of them, any one of them twice. Do you have any anecdotes to share with us about his, his ability to weave a story? Well, he, he would tell great stories about being someplace in the South, uh, someplace speaking. Uh, he just would uh, try to uh, make you feel good and, and not be so serious about yourself. He was a funny, funny guy. He would always ask me about uh, individuals or people that he met, uh, whether someone was still in jail, because he knew during the 60s we were always going to jail. He said, stay out of jail and let me just argue your case. You don't need to go to jail again. Congressman Lewis, Vernon Jordan, thank you both for helping us remember Justice Thurgood Marshall this morning. Thank you. Appreciate you both joining us. Fifteen minutes after the hour, we'll be right back. miles west of Boston. It's the perfect spot to tune up for your big ski trip, to learn to ski, to race, to party it for the night. The Shoba Valley, it's the Boston Tops. There's an ingredient in Efferdent you may not expect. Antibacterial Efferdent, made with Arm & Hammer baking soda. Leaves dentures baking soda fresh and clean. How long does Replens relieve the discomfort of vaginal dryness? For days at a time. Call 1-800-4-REPLENS for a free sample and discover the difference of Replens. Vaginal moisture that lasts for days. Effective immediately. If anyone thinks they can beat Fretter's prices on name brand appliances and electronics, there's no way. If anyone claims their regular sale price is better than Fretter, there's no way. Because the minute they try, it's immediately less at Fretter. Or, it's free. Now there's no need to shop for the best price on name brands. It's always better to buy at Fretter. And if anyone tries to tell you otherwise, tell them, there's no way. Seventeen minutes after the hour, if you want to get an argument started these days, just mention the name Hillary Clinton. She is the first president's wife to have her own office in the West Wing of the White House, the business wing, as it were, where she will work on health care policy. And that's touched off a lot of criticism and support. Joining us from KMOV Television in St. Louis is conservative activist Phyllis Schlafly and in Washington, Democratic strategist Ann Lewis. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ann Lewis, let me start with you. Hillary Clinton, not elected. Some people would argue she has no business in the West Wing. What do you say? Um, she has a great deal of business. Well, let us be clear. Hillary Clinton is a thoughtful and caring woman who is working with her husband on issues they care about that are important to them and important to the country. Um, I must say, I am a little shocked when I hear people talk about this not elected business because, in fact, government and policies are regularly made, come up with by people who are not elected. I can mention in the first Reagan White House, people like, oh, Michael Deaver. If you may remember, we had a troika of Michael Deaver and Ed Meese and Jim Baker, who were the first White House staff under President Reagan. None of those gentlemen have been elected to office. And yet when, when they arrived at the White House, Washington greeted them with hurrahs. Uh, I think we look at them in retrospect a little differently. The difference here is that Hillary Clinton is a woman. Uh, the difference, this is not about redecorating mm -hmm. the White House or who sits in which space. 
This is about a woman, once again, taking a slightly different role, and that's why I think she's become such a lightning rod. Let but me, she's going to come through this very well. Let me jump here. Phyllis Schlafly, why not get one of what some people would say, one of the 100 best lawyers in the country to come help you out, somebody certainly you, you, you know and trust? Well, the big question is, is she going to be treated like an ordinary appointee, or when the going gets tough, is she going to demand to have it both ways and be treated like a wife? You see, health care is the most intensely controversial issue in the country. Is she going to answer the tough questions about, are we going to force workers to pay income tax on their benefits in order to provide uh, care for the uninsured? When the Clinton Health Board sets up its uh, basic health package, is abortion going to be part of the package? Now, is she going to answer the tough questions, uh, go before Congress and testify, make speeches, mm -hmm. handle press calls, or when the going gets tough, is Clinton going to get up on his high horse and say, how dare you attack my wife, just like he did when Jerry Brown tried to raise questions about her in their debate do you, over... Do you uh, think she has, so you think it's okay that she's got an office in the West Wing and that she has this job as kind of, kind of the appointed head of, of honchoing up uh, health care reform? Well, I think the feminists try to have it both ways. I is she what going do you to be treated think? Like I'm trying to find out what you think. Oh, well, I don't think she can be fired. They say she's going to be the Jim Baker of this uh, administration. But is she going to be available to answer these tough questions? Taxes and abortion are the most uh, controversial issues, and they're intensely involved with health care. And this is the biggest issue. Uh, is she going to have it both ways? I mean, that's what Zoe Baird did when uh, she said she'd be a great attorney general, but when the going got tough, she said, oh, I was just acting like a mother and blamed it on her husband. And Liz, now, I think... Go ahead. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Phyllis, real quick. Well, well, I just think the feminists try to have it both ways, and I think that when it comes to press uh, interviews and the, with the way the Republicans treat her, uh, is she going to be treated like a wife we, or an appointee? Well, we shall, we shall see. And, Lewis, this is very interesting because here's Phyllis Schlafly won't even say that it's a bad idea that uh, Hillary Clinton has an office in the West Wing. I, I'm curious, though, through this whole campaign, through most of the, at least maybe the last six months of the campaign anyway, we heard about Hillary Clinton, the cookie baker, and not as the, the policy analyst or, or somebody who's smart who's going to be Bill Clinton's partner in all of this. Which, which, which one are we supposed to embrace at this point? Well, I don't think we have to choose one or the other. You know what the history of the women's movement has been about for the last couple of decades, Harry, has been saying that we are both. We are wives, we are mothers, we also may have a career, we may have a profession. What Bill and Hillary Clinton have said is, we often work as a team. I don't think anyone looking at the history of that couple throughout that campaign, looking at the way Bill Clinton as governor of Arkansas turned to Hillary Clinton when the issue was education reform, and she did a terrific job, would be surprised to see that he would once again turn to her on issues he thinks are important. The fact is what we're trying to say is, any one of us is more than a single stereotype, almost a caricature. Any one of us has more facets to our lives. What's so exciting about watching Bill and Hillary Clinton work together is they tell us, yes, we are well-rounded people. We bring to this relationship, to this partnership, if you will, mm -hmm. both what we do at home and in the office. I think for a lot of Americans, there's something very exciting about that prospect. In the 20 seconds we have left, Phyllis Schlafly, so you say it's okay just so long as she lives as the standard, lives by the standards any other appointee would have to live by. Well, yes, and she's taken on the, the toughest, most controversial issue, and I just wonder if she's going to answer the questions on the taxes and the other aspects of the health care policy that concern every American. I think it will be very difficult for people to treat her just like an ordinary appointee. Phyllis Schlafly and Lewis, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. Do appreciate it. Have a good morning. Paula. 23 minutes after the hour coming up, Al Pacino and the Golden Globe Awards. I started thinning around uh, when I was 20. But I had a few guys at the gym I did mention one time that, geez, you know, we're thinning, we're losing our hair, and uh, they wish they had a nice head of hair like I have. And that really blew my mind. Having hair is the greatest. When I first put the replacement on, I felt prettier. I felt younger, which is important. And um, I still feel that way. I'm very happy I did it. New England Associates is New England's largest hair replacement company. We offer the latest techniques in hair replacement to give you back a natural, great-looking head of hair. I started losing my hair when I was about 24. I realized it was like one of the best things I had ever done because now I have so much more confidence 
Call the toll-free number on your screen now and receive a free brochure from New England Associates. Call 1-800-767-2500. Remember when you ate all the eggs you wanted? Well, you don't anymore, so every egg you do eat should be special. Introducing Eggland's Best, special eggs from specially fed hens. Eggs from hens that eat no animal fat. Eggs that are higher in nutrition than ordinary eggs because they have more vitamin E, an important antioxidant. Now you can make every egg you eat extraordinary. Eggland's Best, because our hens eat better, you'll eat better. Come in with my mouth. Uh, sure, baby. Johnny sells seven apples at six cents a piece. Mm -hmm. Mary sells eight apples at five cents a piece. Okay, okay. Now, what if Mary's out of business next month? Well, if there's a problem, who's going to come? What if one of the apples gets bruised? Who do you call? When you're in business, you have to understand the importance of good service. Oh, the price has to be right, man. But that's not enough. Leave thing. your job at work. Use New England Telephone and get more service for your money. Mom! Good morning, I'm Ron Sanders. It's 725 on this windy Monday, January 25th. Michelle Michaels will have the forecast in a moment, but first, our top local story. Strike or lockout? It depends on who you ask, but 900 Boston gas workers are off the job this morning. Their union rejected a contract offer late last night. Boston Gas calls it a strike. Workers say they've been locked out. They protested against their replacements in Roslindale. A union spokesman says the employees are willing to work while negotiations continue but we'll pick it until they're allowed back on the job. The company says it does not expect the work stoppage to affect emergency services to its 500,000 customers. There are several reports of vandalism to company property overnight. Orange Line murder suspect, 22-year-old William Pony Whitson, is scheduled to appear in West Roxbury District Court this morning. Whitson is charged with killing 16-year-old Axel Reyes on January 15th when Reyes was riding the Orange Line. Police suspect the violence was gang-related. Three other young men were injured in the incident. Testimony continues today in the triple murder trial of Kenneth Seguin. Seguin is charged with killing his wife and two children last April. The defense contends Seguin was insane at the time. Testimony is expected to wrap up early this week. Now for a check of last night's winning lottery numbers in Massachusetts, 0218. In Rhode Island, 1603. Michelle Michaels with the forecast when we come back. You know how much it costs to install cable? Zero. No. Nada. Who say? The big donut. Cable's got a deal that gives you a lot for nothing. Call 1-800-CABLE-ME and we'll install cable absolutely free with your order of cable and two premium services. There's a lot of high-quality television installed free. The world's best news coverage, round-the-clock sports, dramas, comedies, music videos, original programs, and much, much more. And if you call now and order our premium services, look at the entertainment you'll choose from. HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, The Movie Channel, The Disney Channel, Sports Channel, and Nesson. So call 1-800-CABLE-ME now and order cable and two premium services and get them installed free. How much does it cost to install cable? Zero. Nada. Who's that? It's free. Just push the button and you're home free. So what are you waiting for? State Trooper Grant Mollison is keeping an eye on the morning commute from his helicopter. I think I saw you flying sideways a little while ago, Grant. Uh, follow the bouncing helicopter. Wow, is it with me. Good morning to you. Typical delays, 3 at 93 southbound, approaching 495, 128 southbound, Wakefield, Wubin transition, plenty of company there. A bit closer to the city, as you can see, the traffic coming at you is the southbound artery. It's typically tied up getting past the dark square up ramp. The lower deck is full, so is the tow, but Charlestown, the Gilmore Bridge is at this moment half full. Now there, the X-ray is moving well, coming up into the South Station Tunnel. That's because the big volume is caught up in the to Andrew Square. Let's check in with Michelle Michaels. Thank you, Grant. That is true. Winds are now whipping out of the uh, west at around 20 to 35 miles per hour or so. Those will continue for most of the day and then begin to diminish towards tonight. Now, these winds are ushering in much colder air. Notice the temperatures, 33 now in Malden. Temperatures continue to uh, kind of fall. They will rebound a bit by this afternoon, heading up the mid to upper 30s and then a clear calm and cold night is in store for tonight with temperatures back down into the teens say goodbye to springtime winter is back ron goodbye <laughs> in sports the bruins play the canadians tonight the first of 
two games they'll play in Montreal. And in figure skating, Nancy Kerrigan won the national championships last night. We'll be back at 8. Here's valuable news from the Boston Globe. Now you can get 26 weeks of the Globe home delivered for only $2.25 a week. Just $2.25 a week now brings you everything from divided nations to the United Nations, center court to half court, and around the world to your own backyard. All for an incredible $2.25 a week. You save $1.75 each week off the regular home delivery price. That's better than getting the Sunday Globe free every week. Call this number now. You can even use your Visa or MasterCard. Get special sections for the whole family, like Health and Science, Business Extra, Calendar Magazine, Sports Plus, Arts, Theater, Movies, and more. All for only $2.25 a week. That's almost three months free of the best in travel, shopping, jobs, food, books, and gardening, delivered right to your door every day. Credit cards are accepted, so take advantage of this special $2.25 offer and order the Globe right now. Call 1-800-243-1171, extension 71. A state prosecutor and his scandal with the newswomen on hard copy. Pretty. Musical reunion of the University of Tulsa's radio and modern choirs with our theme today. Our thanks to them and to KOTV. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. I'm Harry Smith. Good morning, everybody. I'm Paula Zahn. Big news for anyone with college-bound kids this morning. It's easier to get government aid than you might think. Our money editor, John Stair, has the details coming up. Then meet Roger Defoe, who turned a personal tragedy in a commitment to help and became one of our heroes in health. We'll meet him a little bit later on this morning. Then to Hollywood, where Mark McEwen gets us caught up on the winners, the losers, and surprises at the Golden Globe Awards. That's coming up, too. Right now, here are this morning's headlines. The Joint Chiefs of Staff meet with President Clinton today to hear his plans for lifting the ban on gays in the military. Military brass strongly oppose the idea. So do many in Congress. Thurgood Marshall is being remembered as a hero in the fight for racial justice and equal rights. The retired Supreme Court Justice died yesterday at the age of 84. Time now to move on out to the West Coast to 28 minutes before the hour. Mark is out in California doing triple duty as our guide to the Golden Globe, Disneyland's all-new Toontown, and, of course, yep. this morning's weather. Good morning uh, here to I am. both well, Good morning you. with uh, Mickey Mouse. We're on the set of Steamboat Willie. If you remember, if you know your history, 1928 is when it first came out. He's in black and white, and he's got, you know, you got a hairline like Jack Nicholson. Do you know that? You know one thing I always wanted to do? Just kiss you right on the nose there, Mickey. One of the nice things about Mickey's Toontown is the fact that you can come out here and get your picture taken with Mickey. Sometimes you miss him on the, on the grounds of uh, Disney World and Disneyland. Let me tell you, this weather segment is sponsored by Carnation Instant Breakfast with all the nutrition of a complete meal because life doesn't stop for breakfast. The weather, the big concern today will be in Florida. Look for 50 to 60 mile per hour winds, 5 to 10 inches of rain. There's a storm developing in the eastern uh, Gulf. Uh, the northwest will stay wet. Southwest will be dry and warm. Look for cold air sweeping across the northeast. Thanks a lot, Mickey. You're a good-looking guy. That's all the weather up to this point. Harry? Thanks, Mark. If you have a college-bound kid, listen up, because getting financial aid has become, listen to this, easier. Our money editor, John Stair, is here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Some good news for a change. Good news. Good morning, Harry. What's new is that Congress rewrote the rule book last summer, and the changes should mean new opportunities for financial help for hundreds of thousands of next fall's freshmen. Many of these high schoolers will soon take their final, final exams at Glenbrook South. 92% of them will go to college, but often the real test will be for their parents. Our peers talk about it all the time. How are we going to put these kids through school? It's kind of a monster as far as where's all this funding going to come from. These parents are attending a session that's part pep talk. The school of your dreams, even though it may be an expensive school, may still be a real possibility. The meeting's also part cram course. The subject, new rules from Congress, which divert more aid to the middle class. They make it important that families apply, even if they thought they couldn't get help. The biggest change is federal aid programs no longer count home equity or farm equity as part of your assets. That's a big boost for middle-income families. There's a new kind of low-interest loan called an unsubsidized Stafford loan for students who can't prove a financial need. Students will have to pay only the interest until they graduate. 
subsidized Stafford loans, formerly called guaranteed student loans, now have higher loan limits. Those are for students who can prove a need. Students are now expected to contribute less of their income to their education. Uncle Sam now figures 50% of a student's income should go to college, down from 70%. And parents can now take out so-called plus loans up to the full college cost, once you subtract any other financial aid you get. Until this year, there was a $4,000 cap. Bottom line, more people than ever can now owe a fortune. So you can be really $100,000 in debt. If you choose to do that... But if loans will be more plentiful, what about scholarships you don't have to pay back? Well, there's more and there's less. Congress has made a million more students eligible for federal Pell Grants, but it never approved more funding. Therefore, more students will get less money each. The maximum grant has gone from $3,700 to $2,300 and it could fall even further. Section D goes into the asking you about your financial strength. A new system of application forms adds yet another wrinkle this year. Every applicant has to fill out this free federal form, but some schools also require this second form which you pay for from the college scholarship service. Now some schools in some states add a third form of their own, so it's critical to find out exactly which forms each school demands. And here is some even better news about these college scholarship service forms. They're just now being distributed about two months late because of the rule changes. And we found that because of the delay, many schools will accept these forms after the deadline, but you should check with the school first. Are these particularly hard to fill out or...? Well, they're long. They're not particularly hard, but there are a lot of questions you have to answer, and it's, it's kind of uh, busy, kind of annoying, repetitive work. But obviously you should do it if it's going to mean some money in your pocket. So what happens if I go through all of this, fill out all the forms, do everything, and I still end up with an aid package that's a lot less than I thought I ought to get? What you should do is you should appeal. Go to the financial aid office of the school that your child is going to attend and appeal. But you better have something to bring to the table if you're going to do that. Don't go in and waste their time and your time because unless you have some compelling reason why you qualify for financial aid, they're not going to give it to you. Just going in and saying, but I need more money, I really do is not enough. You gotta have your ducks in a row and you gotta have a reason. Because that's what everybody else is gonna say. John Stair, we thank you very much. That's uh, very interesting stuff. Paula? Thanks, Harry. 24 minutes before the hour. Just ahead on CBS this morning, we find a hero in health in a little girl, Prince Charming. He learns that he's really lonely when he picks something he shouldn't. Okay? for work and you're not to leave this house without breakfast oh and who does that sound like give your family all the nutrition of a complete meal with carnation instant breakfast because life doesn't stop for breakfast this is your captain speaking we've just reached our cruising altitude of 31,000 feet and in a moment the flight attendants will begin serving lunch and captain we forgot the Colombian coffee percent Colombian coffee and picked by Juan Valdez. It's the richest coffee in the world. Kraft singles taste better because they're made from five <laughs> ounces of milk. How do they do that? Well, the mommy cow sprinkled the milk into the teeth till it got real big. Then she ironed it till it got real smooth. More milk means better mm. taste and every Kraft single is made from five ounces of milk. Excellent. Unlike imitation cheese, made mostly with oil and water, milk makes Kraft Singles taste better. K-R-A-F-T. Bye. Can this commercial alone really convince you to do anything? So we're not going to shout about all the great services Coldwell Banker has. You probably listen to your friends before you listen to us. And that's okay with us. Because nine out of ten Coldwell Banker customers are so satisfied with our service, they would recommend us to their friends. That's our TV commercial. Coldwell Banker. Expect the best. <coughs> Ricola, the all-natural herb cough drop imported from Switzerland. Ricola has been soothing throats and relieving coughs naturally for over 60 years. 
This morning's health segment is sponsored by Aquafresh Flex Toothbrush, the only toothbrush that bends and flexes as you brush. at 21 minutes before the hour, thousands of people donate blood every day and they usually have no idea where it's going. Well, this morning, Dr. Bob Arnott has a hero in health and the story of what happens when that wall of anonymity is broken. Good morning. Good morning, Paula. I'd like you to meet two people. A father who decided to help others in the wake of a terrible personal tragedy and a little girl who got a second chance at life. I realized one day that um, it was time to move on and I wanted to do things with my life and look toward the future. For 38-year-old Roger Defoe, an electronics engineer in Denver, moving on meant letting go. He even threw the worst tragedy a parent can face, losing his four-year-old daughter Becca to a rare form of leukemia. The thing I remember about her probably the most is her stubbornness and her sense of humor. She was uh, a pretty special kid. In his grief, he came to a conclusion. That I wanted to do something for the people that had done so much for us and for Becca. That something was to go back to Children's Hospital where his daughter died. He became a volunteer and started to donate whole blood, but soon was asked to undergo a process called apheresis. It's a high-tech procedure that allows blood to be separated into different blood components. Roger donates platelets, which control clotting. The rest of the blood is then pumped back into his other arm. Soon, the hospital started calling him for donations. That's when I found out that uh, her name was Michaela. That's all I was allowed to know. Um, but I knew that a little five-year-old girl was getting my platelets. Her parents sent pictures and wrote that Michaela had an aggressive cancer called Ewing's tumor. She'd undergone surgery to remove part of her cancerous thigh bone, and she was getting intensive chemotherapy. Michaela desperately needed blood platelets. When a patient has low red cells and also a low platelet count, and are predisposed to bleeding, they don't have much reserve, and a bleed could be a major life-threatening problem very quickly. A blood donation is a concern. There, um, the hepatitis, the, the HIV virus, um, it's scary to think that your kid's getting that much blood, and from a variety of donors. Finding a single donor was a godsend for the Hennigs, but they wanted to know him, and Roger was anxious to meet Michaela. Finally, the hospital agreed. As silly as it may sound, my simple goal is to get a hug. That's, that's the big thing that I'm hoping for. So. Glad to meet you. Hi. Hi. Are you feeling good? Mm-hmm. I got a really special surprise for you. Can you pull it out? That's right. Okay. Mom and Dad said you wanted to be a ballerina when you grow up. Is that right? You'd never know they just met. I hear you're all done with your treatment, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's great. And your hair is going to grow back? It's already starting. Is that right? He's one of our heroes. Yeah. We've, we've had many heroes in our battle, and he's one of them. How you doing? And have you ever heard of elephants going down the slide? Sure I have, haven't you? No. I made it a point to pray for Michaela, and I just believed the best for her. She's going to make it. If there's a hero, there's also a heroine, Michaela. Her doctors expect a complete recovery. As for Roger, he told us Michaela had stolen a piece of his heart, and he's still giving blood for other children. What a beautiful story. Thanks, Bob. We'll be back. Ripe tomato, I'm going to show you how the Aquafresh Flex Brush helps take care of your gums and your teeth. It has a flexible neck, so no matter how you brush, you can see it's gentle on your gums. Aquafresh Flex for gentle dental care. How long does Replens relieve the discomfort of vaginal dryness? For days at a time. Call 1 800 4 Replens for a free sample and discover the difference of Replens. Vaginal moisture that lasts for days. There's never been a tissue like new Ultra Soft Puffs. It's amazing. This is like a powder puff. I 
have just discovered something that is really great. Four out of five people prefer the softness of new puffs over the leading regular tissue. This is softer tissue. This year, it's really, really soft. Oh, that is soft. Soft enough to make you switch? Once you use puffs, you'll never go back to anything else. The old brand is history. I am definitely switching to puffs. Switch to new ultra soft puffs. So soft, they're like first aid for your sore nose. Nobody takes my puffs. How many times have you depended on NyQuil to get you through all those colds, all those nights? Now the makers of NyQuil present the most complete non-drowsy cold medicine you can get. Introducing DayQuil Liquid Caps, the amazing liquid-filled capsules that have concentrated medicine to relieve your coughing, chest congestion, stuffy head and fever with nothing to make you drowsy. Introducing Vicks DayQuil Liquid Caps, non-drowsy relief beyond belief. I'm amazed. Every morning, everywhere, when the sun wakes up the sky, let folders be there to open up your eyes. In what was Yugoslavia, the fighting has returned to Croatia. Croatian government troops now say they have captured a key airport from Serbian forces, just inside a neutral zone monitored by UN peacekeepers. Tom Fenton reports. As the warring parties haggle in Geneva over terms for a peace settlement in Bosnia, the agreement reached last year in neighboring Croatia is falling apart. Croatian troops moved into Serb-populated areas of Croatia over the weekend. The UN troops that are supposed to protect these enclaves stood by helplessly as the Croats reconquered their lost territory. Croatian President Franjo Tudjman said last night that his forces have ended their surprise offensive. But the Serbs in Croatia are rearming. They have raided UN depots to seize the heavy weapons they surrendered after last year's ceasefire. Meanwhile, the war in Bosnia shows no signs of ending. The men on the ground seem to speak a different language from the men in Geneva. More than 5,000 persons have fled the fighting in northern Bosnia in the past week. They include all ethnic groups. With the few belongings they can carry, they are crossing the river Drinja into Serbia. The flood of refugees in this cruel war never stops growing. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. And finally, the promise of a middle income tax cut was like a dream to a lot of folks. Well, the Clinton administration says it's time to wake up. Charles Osgood is here with some thoughts on that. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, everybody. Once again, most of the news the middle class is getting is bad news. The middle class was going to get a tax cut, but now, sorry, middle class, no tax cut for you. The tax increases that were only going to be felt by the rich people won't, of course, be anywhere near enough to start controlling the deficit, so some other group is going to have to start paying more taxes, too. I wonder what group that is going to be. Sorry, middle class, you're it. If there is to be a new energy tax, as the Clinton administration is suggesting, there's no question it's going to fall most heavily on the middle class. The middle class in the United States is huge. Most people here are middle class. If you ask Americans what class they think they're in, most of them will tell you middle class. Despite dissenting opinions expressed from time to time, American values are middle-class values. The American way of life is a middle-class way of life. When it rains in the United States, it rains on the middle class. When it snows, it snows on the middle class. If there's a cold going around, the middle class catches it. When there's a recession, the middle class hurts. And when the time comes to pay for whatever the U.S. government does, it's the middle class that sooner or later has to pick up the tab. Most of it, anyway. If you want to be elected here, one test that you must pass is to win the votes of those who constitute the middle class. Without them, you can't win, no matter how hard you may try to. And that is why the middle class becomes the one you lie to. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Let's get a check on our weather right now at 11 minutes before the hour. Mark is in Disneyland out on the West Coast to get us caught up. Who's your buddy? <laughs> well, you know, in New York, the Donald's an entirely different person out here. The Donald is the Donald. This is the Duckster right here. Good morning to you, Donald. Good to see you. You know, I got now. Are you and Daisy married? 
Oh, you're not. <laughs> he says, Ixnay on the airage way, right? I have another question for you. Do you and Daisy, Mickey, and Minnie ever get together for, like, bridge or anything like that? You do stuff like, do you ever, like, double date and stuff? Yeah, well, cool. You're good. You know something that, if you can see behind us, that's, uh, uh, it's called the Daisy? Miss Daisy, and that's a, a, sort of like a boat down here in Toontown. Everything is uh, sort of hands-on. Yeah, the kids can have fun and everything. If you notice, the top of your hat looks like the top of that boat. Donald, you're a cool dude in a loose mood. Let's talk about the weather right here and take a peek. As you can see, this is the latest satellite picture out in uh, your sister place out there in Orlando, Donald. They're seeing a lot of rain out there today. Be very careful. Uh, 5 to 10 inches of rain uh, within the next 12 to 48 hours. There's a big storm brewing down there in the eastern Gulf. As you can see out to uh, the west, we've got some uh, rain up in the northwest. And let's click in on that. This rain will be happening a little bit later on today. A stormy northwest, a little bit lighter amounts of rain, a half an inch to an inch of rain. As you can see from the coastline on in, especially in Washington. Watch out for snow in the mountains of eastern Washington, also western Montana and northern Idaho as well. That's one of the reasons why it's green up there. Did you know that, Donald? Donald and I are like old buds now. That's a quick look at the national forecast. Donald, why don't we take a look at your weather? Thank you, Donald. Our uh, bus stop weather watches this morning reporting temperatures on the chilly side. Winds are brisk now out of the west, gusting at times up to 35 miles per hour, and that will cap off with chilly readings for today with temperatures only in the mid to upper 30s under partly to mostly sunny skies. Silently the senses abandoned. Celebrate five years of the Phantom on Broadway tomorrow on CBS This Morning. It is 10 minutes before the hour. As you can see, I'm hanging out with stars here. Hollywood is still buzzing from the 50th annual Golden Globe Awards that happened this weekend. Hollywood takes this very seriously. It honors movie and television work. As you can see, just about everybody in Tinseltown showed up. In recent years, the Golden Globe Awards have become a pretty good predictor of the Academy Awards, with Globe nominees odds-on favorites for Oscar gold. As a result, Hollywood takes this ceremony seriously very seriously but compared to the other award shows the celebrities see this one as one big party well, the golden globes you know people aren't usually sedated the way they are for the others golden globes are completely fun you get to sort of spy on people a lot of yucks i think that's a great thing for me to come here you know a lot of times you don't get to see these actors that much and you get to chance to really tell them how much you enjoyed their performances we're in the car going oh i'd like to be so so well yeah, yeah i'd like to be so so yeah it's looser it's more fun. Uh, I've got two. Everybody seems to be here, so this is kind of like high school. Like, oh, it's like a big class reunion. They feed us at this one, so that's always fun. It's just more relaxed. It's because you're with so, friends. Welcome to the 50th Annual Golden Globe Awards tonight. The show even gave me a chance to catch up with my old buddy, Jane Seymour. Was I right about your show, or was I right? You were right, but how right did you know you were going to be? I mean, this is more right than even you knew. <laughs> so it looks like Dr. Quinn is doing wonderful. It looks like Dr. Quinn's going to come and have to read the weather for you one day. <laughs> You'd be way money out of Missouri. Kill women and children. That's right. But the show soon settled down to business. One of the big winners was Unforgiven. Gene Hackman was honored for his supporting actor role. Uh, heck, I just lost a hundred bucks. Clint Eastwood got the nod for best director for a genre, westerns, that some people felt had ridden into the sunset. I never was, was counting him out in the first place, but uh, a lot of people like to speculate around. Gene, you almost didn't take this role. Uh, Clint Eastwood had to talk you into it. Yeah, well, obviously I don't have a very good eye for material. <laughs> We're nearly demented. Mr. Wilcox, I am demented. The British film Howard's End earned a top acting award for Emma Thompson, who attended the ceremony with co-star Anthony Hopkins. Any trepidation about working with this gentleman after Silence of the Lamb? My mother sent him a note before we started on Howard's End, <laughs> saying, Dear Mr. Hopcroft, if you please, don't eat my daughter. I have a whole other life, you know, a career, a, a business. I, I'm a pilot. I have the quirky people. drama Northern Exposure was named best television show, but in terms of TV, the night really belonged to Roseanne. Those two are always crying about how we don't treat them like adults. Now we are. This may work. Are you insane, Dan? I just put Becky in charge. That's like putting Fredo in charge of the Corleone family. John Goodman was named best actor in a TV series. Rosie, wherever you are, baby, you're the greatest. See you on the midway, kid. And Roseanne herself was named best actress. She's at home. She's sick. She's not deathly sick, so keep the photographers outside of the gate there. She's doing well. I love you. Got this here. It's really fun here. Food's pretty good, honey. I love you. Jack Nicholson is here. He's sitting right over there. Don't look now. <laughs> it's really cool. I'll 
Pacino says of a woman. One of the emotional highlights of the evening came when Al Pacino, an 11-time Golden Globe nominee, finally won one for his role as the despicable blind colonel in Scent of a Woman. Pacino was clearly thrilled. I, I am surprised at this, but uh, I will go on. Let's see. Uh... All your career, Al, I've seen you in control in all the movies that I've seen you in. You win an award, you get up on stage. I'm out of control. What I'm happened? <laughs> Because I guess this is me, an out of control person. I guess. Congratulations, so and it's well deserved. Well uh, deserved. Yes. Let me clear something up. Al Pacino won for Best Dramatic Actor for Scent of a Woman. Tim Robbins won for Best Actor in a Musical or a Comedy for The Player. Scent of a Woman won for Best Dramatic Movie, and The Player won for Best Musical or Comedy. <sighs> you got all that? <laughs> they got to be favorites for the Oscars as well. Six before the hour. We'll be right back. This portion of CBS This Morning was sponsored by Nonstick Free Dent Gum. Nonstick Free Dent moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. The Carlsons have always loved Free Dent. They love how it won't stick to their dental work. But since they've discovered our new winter fresh flavor, things have cooled off considerably. That is, at least as far as their breath is concerned. Because after all, when your mouth feels cooler, your breath feels fresher. So try new Winter Fresh Free Dent, a cooler flavor for fresher breath. Light, it is the first element of creation. Nothing brings it more elegantly or shapes it more beautifully than Anderson windows and patio doors. Come, live in the light of Anderson windows. Come home to Anderson. <laughs> Are we okay? Oh, not really, no. I, I'm all stuffed up. I'm all stuffed up. Well, I got a sore throat and a cough. Well, me too. Well, stop complaining. I'm not complaining. Somebody is complaining. Then we'll take something. Not that cough syrup makes me gag. When you're all blocked up, Ludens helps. Fast-acting cough suppressants with menthol vapor relief. <sighs> I, can I can breathe. breathe. For serious vapor relief, Ludens helps. Really help. Oh, great. Just what my stomach needs, here comes my obnoxious boss. Hi, Daddy. Uh, oh, boy. Better make it Maalox. Because extra strength Maalox Plus neutralizes more acid than my Lanta. So you better make it Maalox. For cleaning, shining, and disinfecting, nothing outperforms us in the bathroom. Dow Bathroom Cleaner, starring Scrubbing Bubbles. We work hard so you don't have to.